right, so it wouldn't be Verticon without stopping by the Bell booth. Bell is always putting on a big display, and this year, I would say is actually the biggest and most exciting display that I've seen. I'm hanging out with Doug Hamill right here with Bell. Uh, and we're behind us here, we have the 525. I've never actually seen the 525. I'm so excited to be seeing it. And Doug is actually gonna give us a little bit of a tour and explanation of the aircraft. But before we get into it, Doug, first off, thank you. Yeah, and absolutely. just tell us a little bit more about you, your role, and how it applies to the 525. Okay, uh, so my name is Doug Hamill, right? Been at uh, Bell for 20 years now. Uh, I've worked probably two thirds of my career on this product. And so it's a very exciting time for us at Bell to, to be able to bring this to market. It's our first clean sheet design in 30, 40 years now. Uh, and so, yeah, we're, we're really excited about it. It's going to launch into the uh, oil and gas industry initially, but there's a lot of different configurations I think we'll get a chance to talk about today. So uh, I'm an engineer. I've been an engineer uh, for the full 20 years. and. Uh, Started out in structures, and now I'm uh, serving as de deputy role on the program. So I get to see a lot. Uh, I get to learn a lot. This helicopter has a lot to learn. So first fly-by-wire system, uh, first commercially certified fly-by-wire helicopter that will enter the market uh, later this year. So I'm really excited. So, I'm so excited to learn more about this machine. This is like kind of my entry level into it, to be honest. I, I don't know much, so Doug, I'm so excited to walk around. Let's take a look. All right, sounds good. So I had a bit of a sneak peek already in the cockpit of the 525. It looks incredible. It seems like this is a machine that is built for pilots. Tell me a little bit about the cockpit, some of the innovation, the avionics, and then you also earlier teased this fly-by-wire. Tell me more about that as well. Yeah, so it really starts with passenger comfort uh, and pilot comfort. I mean, the whole bit behind fly-by-wire system is to be able to make it uh, use automation to your advantage uh, so that you have better pilot awareness, better uh, situational awareness, uh, the fly-by-wire system uh, augments or uh, s supports the pilot, doesn't take over. The pilots are always in full control in this aircraft, but uh, it helps them out. And uh, another thing you'll notice, or you have noticed whenever we looked in the aircraft, is the, the sticks. Uh, in a tr traditional uh, helicopter, you have a center stick for your cyclic. Uh, well, this aircraft, we've now implemented a side stick. So you have side stick for the collective and a side stick for the cyclic. Uh, that makes for a lot better ergonomics so that you're more comfortable because uh, we intend for these to go pretty far offshore. Yeah. So you get a long, long trip to take. You don't want to get too uncomfortable leaning over, hunched over a cyclic stick. What has been the pilot feedback with that new setup? Because I imagine, as you're saying, long term it's better, it's more comfortable, but I'm sure there's a bit of a learning curve. There so is. what has that been like for the test pilots? Yeah, I mean, they, they, anybody that's flown it, and we've had other customers come out and fly one of our prototype ships in years past, and they've all said the same thing. It's incredible. It's so easy to fly. It is intuitive. So. I think, yes, there is an adjustment. You're, you know, most pilots that have been flying for 20, 30 years are going to want that cyclic stick in front of them. But really, within a couple hours, you know, in the simulator where you can do your training, you get used to it. It's really not that bad. Yeah, I absolutely love innovation, right? Uh, this industry is continuing to innovate. And I think changing that, doing uh, better ergonomics for the pilot, things like that, I think it's all very welcome. So I'm so happy to hear that Bell is taking that initiative. What are some of the other avionics that we're seeing in the cockpit? Yeah, so this is an all glass cockpit. Uh, it's powered by Garmin 5000, uh, G5000. Uh, and so everything is under display. You don't, what, what you'd see in, uh, in maybe other platforms is panels and panels of circuit breakers and buttons and things to push. <laughs> Absolutely. And in this, it's all at your fingertips. Uh, we have electronic circuit breakers, so you're just able to punch in. That's incredible. Do a surge, get to your circuit breakers if you need to. Uh, the pilot displays are all very intuitive. You can set them up as, as you want. You can customize however you want. It really is very easy to, to, to for any pilot to be able to jump in, learn it quickly, and then just go, and, and it's easy. That's absolutely incredible. That's what I love about being a pilot in this day and age. I've been lucky enough to fly with a lot of Garmin specific products, and what I love about Garmin is that it's so intuitive. It makes it uh, almost, 
dummy proof, I want to say. Uh, I can say that because I am a pilot. So, well, the, the cockpit is amazing. I got to get my hands. I got to get in there. I got to figure out a way to come and fly this thing. Yeah, uh, if we kind of transition away from the cockpit, let's go ahead and take a look in the back. Okay, sounds good. All right, so I've personally worked my way up to the front of cockpits in my career, but equally important is the passenger experience. Now, I don't know if I'm looking at a helicopter or if I'm looking at a bus here. Okay, right. So what is the configuration that we're looking at right now? What is the capacity? And what are some of the other interiors and other mission sets other than what we're seeing here for offshore? Yeah, so this is our offshore oil and gas platform. It's a 16 passenger configuration. There will be other configurations uh, depending on customer needs, uh, but this one is built for comfort. The whole idea is you're gonna be on this aircraft for up to five hours, so uh, why not make it comfortable and easy? Uh, each of the seats, we've got these oversized seats uh, that are meant to to hold folks in a more comfortable position. You're not just squeezed in like sardines, you know? <laughs> you get to actually kind of spread out a little bit. There's plenty of leg uh, space, so, you know, passenger comfort really was the, the primary goal for this configuration. Uh, but there are other configurations that we're also looking at. Uh, probably the next big one might, might be search and rescue. Absolutely. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have our eye on that market. Uh, VIP, we've got a lot of interest from folks on uh, VIP products. Uh, and so th you'll see some that'll be very elegant looking, I would say, I can't on the wait. interiors. Yeah, that one's gonna be pretty exciting. That wouldn't be an uh, uh, interior that I wouldn't mind sitting in the back. Right. Really, I wanna get in the front, but yeah. VIP interior would be pretty slick. Even with this larger uh, capacity, uh, it looks super comfortable. And I, again, I think that's really important, right? We have to take care of not just the pilot crew, but all of the crew to make sure that the comfort is maximized. Five hours, what is the endurance on this thing? Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a five hour mission, so you know five hundred nautical miles. I, and I, I don't remember the exact values, you, you, you know. <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah, it's it's meant for for long offshore missions. That's incredible. Yep. That's some serious distance, and that's going to be a real game changer. I am curious to learn a little bit more about the power plant, so let's go check that out. All right, sounds good. All right, so we're still hanging out with Doug here. Uh, what is powering uh, this impressive aircraft? So it's uh, two GE uh, CT7 engines. Uh, they, they push about 2,000 horsepower, a little less than 2,000 horsepower uh, on the shaft. And uh, there's a, also a Honeywell APU. I think it's an R700 APU. Um, so those, that, that's the power plant for the, for the aircraft, yeah. That's awesome. And for our listeners out there that are really, really helicopter specific and maybe they've never been in an aircraft with an APU, what is the purpose of the APU? So our APU helps with engine starts. Okay. It also powers a lot of the uh, uh, ECS system and, and electronics, avionics uh, during initial startups. So you don't have to have your engines running to actually have the uh, AC go. That's really so nice. That's a big one because, yeah, there's a lot of folks, especially whenever you're out on uh, offshore platforms like uh, in Guyana where it's going to be really hot. Yeah. Or up in Norway where it's going to be really cold. Being able to power the heaters uh, and the uh, AC unit without uh, having the engines running is a, is a big deal. I think we've all felt that on the commercial airplanes before where you're sitting on the ground and you're like, yeah. Where's the APU? Why right. can't they turn on the air? It's really hot. Yeah. So I'm really I can't glad. To, yeah, <laughs> I'm really glad to hear that. And we're just talking about the fully articulated system. Talk to me why that is important for this aircraft and this idea of indiscriminate loading. Right. So yeah, it's a it's a five bladed, fully articulated roller system. Uh, the first for Bell. Uh, what that means then is that uh, you're able to put weight wherever you want. You don't have to worry about making sure that you have two passengers on the left and two passengers on the right, so you make sure everything's balanced. Even with the baggage compartment, you can pretty much put the weight wherever you want. There's there's no need to work. Now, you, you probably want to uh, just just for good practice, Yeah. but the fact that you don't have to worry about it, especially whenever you're in a quick get out of here situation, you just go. And that's that's that makes it a lot easier, a lot less worry with how you balance the aircraft. I think what he's saying is if it fits, it ships, which right. is pretty exciting in the 525. I have to say the aft baggage compartment is extremely large. Obviously, yeah. for the offshore configuration, I don't think too many golf clubs are going aboard. But again, we talked about the VIP. That's going to be a big game changer for luggage, golf clubs, you name it. That's not something that we actually have a luxury of yeah. when it comes to helicopters. Even entry level, smaller, say, private airplanes have fairly good baggage, whereas helicopters haven't really found that. So I'm really glad to see yeah. that you guys obviously put a big priority in having a lot of space there. 
Let's keep learning more about this helicopter. All right, so this aircraft and this walk around has been incredible. I'm feeling so fortunate to be able to hang out with Doug here and really get the skiddy on the 525. Obviously a big question for Bell is the certification. So just walk me through a little bit of that progress and where we're at with that. Yeah, so we're down to just a couple tests left to go uh, and a handful of deliverables that we're working with the FAA. Uh, so timing is, is close, feels really close. Can't really speculate exactly when. Uh, but we are marching, marching ahead and making really good progress. So it's, it's so close. We're really excited about uh, our, our uh, OpiVal customer, Omni. Uh, the announcement uh, that came out, it's, it's been really exciting for us to be able to have that opportunity to work with them and partner with them. Yeah, it's awesome to see the helicopter is equipped with the launch customer colors and brand. You guys, Bell is getting so close with this, and I cannot wait to see this as an industry staple. It's really gonna change how we're operating. Doug, thank you so much Absolutely. for the time. Yep. Thank you for introducing me to this incredible aircraft. And guys, check out all the fun innovations that Bell is putting out uh, this week and beyond. Thanks, Doug. Yep, absolutely. Appreciate Thanks. it. Good.